Welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Distortion, episode number 445. My name is Brando. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Courtney Taylor Taylor. How are you, sir? Good, man. How are you doing? And where are you doing? I am doing in Queens, New York. That's where I am oh, currently. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, but you're going to be close soon because we're going to talk about the uh, the tour dates you're about to embark. You're going to be in my neck of the woods March 9th at Webster Hall. Then you're embarking on this massive Australian uh, New Zealand tour. Uh, we have a huge fan base. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I tease them from my Aussies and my Kiwi fan base. Uh, yeah. That, so you'll be all over the world. Uh, where are you located right now, if you don't mind me asking? In my basement of in Portland, Oregon. Oh, okay. Here, I'll show you around. I'll show you around. Here it is. All right. That's the basement. That is, uh, that is exactly the setup of my last apartment I ever had. It was set up exactly like this, and I just moved it into my basement, preserved <laughs> in time forever. Oh, that's pretty. That's funny. Your 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 own uh, do you moonlight as like an interior de designer? Well, <laughs> I own a lot of I own probably twenty thousand square feet of properties, so I've done a lot of designing. Um, not so much on my home. I did I did some really cool stuff, but I have other people do most of the building if it's really fine work. But like my studio, uh, you know, I just get a couple buddies that know how to swing a hammer and you know use a chop saw and we've designed all the rooms there it's called the auditorium with the o-d-d-i-t-o-r-i-u-m and it's just you know it's twenty thousand square feet or it's no it's twelve thousand square feet of roman columns and human sized chessboard cut and dyed into the concrete and you know i mean it's just really gorgeous and super over designed and very rock but you know stylish as fuck and elegant yeah it's, right on. it's it's cool place we've been in there for like 20 years so it's, okay it's seen a lot of work and it's we do film there and we do all the recording and we have i have a wine bar in there nice. which is really great <laughs> <laughs> you know it's, it seems like you have it all made in the shade so it's kind of a, a, a question that i Often comes up in these interviews when people are going on tour. Do you miss leaving all that? Do you miss leaving your your home? Uh, is there something still exciting uh, going on out on tour all these well, years later? If, the if Danny you've Warhols. Been, if you've been traveling like we have, you know, as a lifestyle for thirty years, you you can't stop, you know. But what we like to do is go out every like the best we think is probably every three or four months. Go somewhere for a two week tour. And we've limited it to continental Europe, UK, Scandinavia, North America, uh, and Australia. And those are the territories. So that's what we do. We wander around and every few months, you know, you get the itch to go somewhere and then you go, oh, oh, we're just about three and a half weeks away from, you know, the next tour. So, uh, yeah, and we just manage it as... Um, like a like a, a vacation like you're jonesing for a vacation well you can do it you know sometimes yeah. we have our families come out mm -hmm. you know at the end and then stay you know like you can stay and go to the luxembourg apple festival or you know whatever just hang around in melbourne for a, a week and well, that, I guess that kind of leads into another question, like staying in, in Melbourne for a, a, a week. So I, I'm only, go, I've never been uh, overseas. It's finally happening. Uh, I'm going to London uh, in, in a couple months, but Australia, like I have two uh, friends who married Australians. It's just something that I've always like. It just like seems like a great place to to visit. But what a trip! Mm, what a trip! It really that is. is. 
So uh, what do you do on long ass plane rides like that? <laughs> do you, can you sleep the entire way? Uh, do you watch Netflix? What are you doing? Oh, man? dude, I watch movies. You know, the the food's good. I don't, you know, if I do long flights, I don't fly economy. I can't start out in that kind of a, I'm just, I'm just not, you know, physically ex happy. You know, it's just, a, it, just it hurts. You got to. If you're going to do it, I had to fly back um, from Hong Kong. And, and fortunately, uh, I had a, a sleeping, I don't know, Xanax or something. And boy, that was crazy, man. I, I got some good sleep sitting upright with my head against the window. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I've, I, I used to play football, which I guess you guys call or no, I'm sorry, you're not Australian. In Australia, <laughs> I, I keep thinking I'm speaking to Australia here, which I might be. Uh, gridiron down there, and I got and I got hit really hard, and I crushed a disc in my lower back. So, um, I can't really sit up for 14 hours. You know, I mean, I I've been taken off the plane by paramedics before, so I I have to. Uh, I don't make money on tour. It costs me too much to get there and back. I have it has to be fun because otherwise I won't do it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And especially the dedication to go that far uh, around the world. I mean, it's not just again Australia, New Zealand, and people can see all the dates. Danny Warhols, and that's the beauty of having a podcast is having listeners everywhere. You're going to Canada, uh, yeah. all over. And this is all in support of uh, the new album Rock Maker, which is coming out on uh, March fifteenth. Which... Yeah, which is too much work, way more work <laughs> than I I like the idea of doing. So, we yeah, we've got the first half of this year we're grinding it out, you know, in the most humane possible way, uh, and then we'll hopefully lighten back up, you know, to just lovely, lovely uh, rock and roll vacation, rock rock themed vacations. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. And, but how long, I guess was the whole, the, the most enjoyable process of all of this so far was just making the album. How long did it take for you? Uh, cause there's 11 tracks in the new record. Um, oh God, this one, we, I started it before COVID. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. COVID was new when I had your problem pretty close to in the zone and I, and I played it for Pete. And he was like, oh, yeah. And then I had, then we were, I did the Danzig with myself riff, the super sludgy drop D thing, and then slowed down, I think even more, another half step. But uh, yeah, and then it was game on. And then I think Pete basically provided every guitar riff for every song after that. He, he just couldn't stop. He was just obsessed, like, you know, because we were metal kids and we have never, we do like one metal song every other record. You know, you've got Wasp in the Lotus, you've got Nietzsche, Ride was, you know, very heavy. Um, you know, we were not doing any kind of, you know, operatic singing or, or Cookie Monster or anything. So it's not like <laughs> that metal, but it's right. me metal guitars, slow, grinded out metal guitars, like, like it's we like. Like Sabbath, you know, like Black like Sabbath. Sabbath, like yeah. Sweet Leaf, you know, yeah. just right on. But if it, we can, it, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Danzig with myself, uh, which is just such a fun title. I mean, does, yeah, does that you... led to that led to you make me feel like Danzig, <laughs> Danzig on the ceiling, dirty yes. Danzig, <laughs> right? Do you ever cross paths with uh, with Glenn? I have never met him. Uh, we have some mutual friends, so uh, I hope I hope to meet that dude someday. Okay, okay. I know he did. He's obviously, an amazing icon. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I finally got to see the Misfits a couple years ago at uh, Madison Square Garden, and who is in it? Uh, him and Jerry only, basically. Okay. No. Yeah. So, like, that a is lot of... cool. That is really cool, though. That's amazing. I mean, some of these bands, uh, you got to see while, you know, while they're still around. So, or, you know, sometimes people, people take it for granted because you guys have been touring for so long, the Dandy Warhol. So you don't want to take it for granted that you're going to be doing it forever. <laughs> yeah. I don't but, think we are. I mean, I don't, 
I, 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 I do want to retire, but, um, but only from the business side, you know, Zia is the one who really keeps her eye on the, on the numbers, right? She, she's all over that shit. Okay. And I, I bet she wants to retire bad. There's just no other way to do it. If you're going to, you know, enjoy the rock and roll themed uh, theme park that is going on tour with these friends we've had for 25 years and just keep doing it and have fun. And now we're in Warsaw, dude, and let's go eat. And uh, what do you drink here? You drink bison grass vodka with apple juice. That's a national drink of Poland just fyi okay. uh if you ever get there but uh yeah there is a lot of bullshit accounting and you have to be involved in marketing and you have to you know you have to put out some effort and you have to it invades your home and your life and your other things that you do uh but then there is that you know if you keep your tours nice you can make it an enjoyable experience then you have this reward at the end of all the grindy emails hundreds and hundreds of emails and just oh my god and then you know, thousands of texts and getting up at six in the morning to yeah. have a discussion with a you know with a german pr firm and while he's in slovenia and yeah i it's just yeah yeah it is like a busy it's a busy grind there's you, so much business unfortunately music business yeah but at least through it all we do have the music and that's what's really exciting uh, i just want to mention the danzig with myself because you have some featured artists on this record uh black francis is on that one he's on a, a couple of tracks i believe and yeah yeah he's also on love thyself Right, right. And we yeah. got to have him we got to have him on two tracks because Peter sent him the wrong track. <laughs> Pete sent him Love Thyself. It came back. He I got an email from Charles and he's like, Okay, I did it, sent it to your guy. And Pete sent it to me and goes, Um uh, oh no, Pete didn't hear it yet. I got it too. So I went, uh Pete. Did you send him the wrong? He goes, oh, my God, I did. Which is great because what he added to that, love thyself, is is subtle, but it's, it's game changing. You know, it also just advanced the track to this other level of wow. Uh, but it's not as blatantly loud, you know. So and that's why we didn't put a feature that in the title on that one, because we didn't want to spend the rest of our lives. You hear that guitar, right? Oh, sh 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 right. You don't hear that? Okay, it's, no, it, 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 never mind. It's gone. It'll come back though. I'll, I'll try to remember. Now. Okay, it's gonna come in the next court. You know, like that kind of shit. You just don't want to set yourself up for that in your life. So, the blatantly Black Francis surf style, you know, Dwayne Eddy guitar. In uh, we were like, hey, can you do another one? And he said, sure. Happy <laughs> so, right. accident. I love that. Oh my God, so happy. Yeah. I have to imagine because there's two other uh, collaborations. I'm sure one you're you're assuming I'm going to ask about, but I'll, I'll save the slash one for after. The Debbie Harry one. How mm -hmm. did those how did those come about? I'm assuming it wasn't through an accidental, you know, track is sent there and you got it back. What's the, is, is no, there a, it was, a better story there? <laughs> yeah, just trying to sing that part, you know, like I came up with the part. And uh, and my managers just said, if you could find anyone to sing that part uh, on your record, who would it be? And I went, Debbie Harry, you know. And he goes, okay, I'll check. I'll check. With, I'll, I'll get a hold of her manager and see. How realistic did you think that was going to be? Did you, did you not, think that not was going to be? Not very. Not yeah. very. You know. Wow, yeah, that's it's all a hail mary, you know. I, I I use that word eight times a day because I'm talking about this shit, and it is. You just do it, give it a try. You never know. What was the um, the interaction then? Did you just send her the song? Did you talk on the phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send her the lyrics and the song with me singing that part. 
but I don't even remember how I sang it because it came back different, you know, like she made it hers, you know, because she is absolutely a super pro singer, like amazing vocal chops. And she was such a badass stylist and like the coolest, you know, chick ever. Yeah. And the hottest <laughs> yeah. that people don't talk about her as like this super accomplished vocalist diva. She is a sick ass singer. And if you go back and, and watch live stuff on YouTube that people post up, you know, she's just pogoing around and nailing every note of, of, of you know, big long melody drops and, you know, like in the sun just shocker she's perfect she is absolutely top-notch vocal chops like what how did that escape everybody notice probably except the closest musicians to her mm. you know yeah she's, not, she's an icon and i agree one of the most beautiful women to ever walk this planet just uh yeah. icon uh, and, and what about, well, that song, by the way, is I Will Never Stop Loving You, which I like, uh, which is, sounds like a very Debbie Harry song. <laughs> and this one sounds mm. like a very Slash song. I'd like to help you with your problem and uh, <laughs> getting uh, great reviews. The video is out now. Can you please talk about how the collaboration with uh, Slash came about? Uh, same thing, you know, like me and Pete just trying to do something that we don't have the chops to do. And going who is the who would who is the greatest you know vietnam vet rock guitar player the lsd the sound of 69 1969 lsd 1970 biker rock whatever you know <laughs> and um my a, a really great guitar player friend of mine john fell said yeah slash is like he's like the last of that he's like the last real one there's no no hipster fiddling about nothing trendy at mm -hmm. all he is just purist absolute purist and uh which was thank you you know and so our manager called his manager and sent him the track and that and he got back in like 40 minutes like it was less than an hour and he was, he was like yeah i want to do it. what do you want and I said, you know vietnam vet rock you know just whatever just cry baby but just lsd L lsd rock just you know you know do it wah wah pedal and it came back and it was just so deep and and beautiful uh, it was absolutely stunning it was so much more than had peter and i had the chops to play that kind of thing uh we would not have ever even come close to how how the beautiful exotic nature of what it is it's exotic it's like Arabian Nights, you know, it's castles in Spain or some shit. And he's also doing, you know, real textural stereo trippy stuff. And and yeah, whew, he just unleashed on that one, man. It's really cool. And the breakdown section where he's doing those Middle Eastern scales that are just these, you know, like a wave of butterflies it's it's absolutely stunning the whole thing i i can't listen to this record enough uh, I, I get mean, stoned i get stoned at least once a day and listen to this record <laughs> right on my man i love that yeah. um, and i love that and the, the vietnam rock you better copyright that that's just like <laughs> <laughs> vietnam vet vietnam, vietnam vet, vet rock. rock there you go vietnam vet rock <laughs> uh, i love it yeah, oh, we toured with this. We toured with the Black Angels. We toured with them recently, and uh, and we'll, we're gonna. So now we're booking a tour of Europe and the UK together for later this year, um, and that's really fun because they're kind of like they're really not letting go of that Vietnam. I think he has lyrics about Vietnam, actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Black Angels are great, man. They're great. Uh, we love and, them. I, I I mean there they are great, uh, but if I can continue on, on slash, I just have to, of course, with this. The, when I use the six degrees of GNR bacon with this podcast, that's how I. Yeah, I can uh, see the poster behind you right there. Yeah, you a framed a, one. There's a few of them. I was telling your uh, your buddy Eric before we got connected, he, uh, just explaining my deal. You know, everyone uh, their mother has a podcast. I don't want it to be the Brando show. Everyone has yeah. a rock show. 
So I kind of just used GNR as a nucleus to interview whoever, whether it's a close connection, whether it's not. And mm. I've always wanted a reason to interview you, to be honest with you, Courtney. And then as soon as I saw well, this... Well, Richard, thing, for, I, I took Richard Fortas out to the greatest meal he's ever had in his life. That's a great... So yeah, tell us, what's, what is that? I'm assuming it was better than White Castle or Taco Bell. Where'd you go? Um, <clears throat> there was a... The top... Arguably the top chef of, of Portland... Uh, Vitaly Paley had a place called Paley's and it's maybe four or five blocks from my studio and it is the top restaurant of Portland you know there's not much that could compete with it historically and uh, I am a food and wine guy you know like the dirty life of cocaine and blowjobs and punk rock shitholes and you know just just that 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 uh, has to go away from your life at some point getting super fucked up and passing out in the bathroom of a, you know shit like that you, you can't have that so wine and food wine and food it's available everywhere and everyone's going for it and making really cool stuff right now and have been for like 10 or 15 years it's just been game on food is you know most watched tv and and wine magazines and blah 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 blah, blah. The prices sure. quadrupled quintupled so Shit, I forgot where I started with this. No, that's where did fine. I start? It's, it's a good connection with... Uh, where did I start? Oh, Richard with, Fortis, Richard, Richard Fortis. Paley's. That night, I said, come by the wine bar and... Uh, or no, I said, let's go to dinner. And... Because he doesn't drink. Mm. We get... We, I go, let's go to Vitaly Paley. You like to eat? And he goes, yeah, I love great food. Let's do it. Uh, he's also vegetarian. Mm. Maybe vegan. Maybe even vegan. And they had maybe four or five things on the menu that he could eat which never happens at a really high-end restaurant mainly french-ish they had vegan cassoulet and it was cassoulet is one of my favorite foods and that was one of the three four top cassoulets out of 120 i've had in my life including paris Lyon, france you know like where it lives like bozul you know and uh it was just great i ordered what he ordered and he you know of course was like, you do I, I can watch you eat meat i don't care and i was like no dude i want to <laughs> experience what you're experiencing here and it was the restaurant to go to man because he was you know and i got a great bottle of wine drank it myself fuck yes i didn't have to play that night <laughs> and uh so uh yeah and he as we're walking back down to the studio he he said i think that i think that is the single greatest meal of my life the place has since closed, and oh, Richard was the first one I texted when I heard. <laughs> and he knew exactly what I was talking about. I said, you remember Paley's? It's closed. He was like, yes, of course I remember it. Oh, I'm so yeah. dreams about that meal. No, He I, might. I, I, say, that's a great story. That's, those are the kind of stories I look for, just like the human connections. It's never any dirt. I just love the fact that you're just going out with this for this awesome meal with, uh, with Richard Fortas. How long did you... Um, I guess know him for obviously to be able to take him out and to go out for a dinner. I mean, did you guys go go up in the? the you same remember circles? when Tommy Stinson played on Puff on a Puff Daddy single? <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Do you remember I that? I forgot about it. <laughs> but I, know oh, I, I, I was remember. like, it had it had really cool guitar on it. Really cool guitar. It so was in the, New York. Uh, it wasn't the Zeppelin cover, was it? The one they did for the Godzilla well, I, movie. I Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't think. No. I think it was just a song. You know. Uh, okay. Uh, just a Puff Daddy track. <clears throat> but um, the guitar was very cool. And I. I was in New York. We were on tour or something. I ran into Stinson at a mutual friend's. Like the there was a bar owner that always had the bar that every cool you know Keith Richards would be hanging out there. You know. Um, I. It, it was. It was just great. You know, like Blur or you know Joe Strummer, Mick Jones, whoever that's where you go and uh stinson was there and um and i said uh i said dude your guitar on that track is fucking amazing and the dude standing next to him just laughed really loud and stinson who i think was sober at the time so it was super grumpy um well, yeah real funny it's not me, it's him. And that was Fortis. Okay. 
<laughs> that's what I met Fortis. And we just came friends. And uh, usually what happens is maybe their, you know, Guns N' Roses is in a town that I'm in and we happen to text and, you know, and he's like, oh my God, hey, looks like you're going to be in Minneapolis in three days. We're in Minneapolis three days. Let's hang out. Right. And then when I'm in St. Louis, which is where he lives, I text him and we hang out. You know, if he's in Portland, where I live, we hang out. You know, so yeah, that's um, that's why I ended up at dinner with Fortis. <laughs> My dinner with Fortis. It just sounds like <laughs> <laughs> My dinner with Fortis. It sounds like a movie. <laughs> yeah, it. well, he it's worthwhile. It could be a movie. He's a very very smart guy. You know, he's a very experienced and sweet. Uh, intelligent dude. I'm lucky to have had both him and uh and Tommy on the the podcast. And this is the last Gino related thing before we just uh, wrap up, go back to the tour and album. Uh, since you because you guys started the Dandy Warhols early '90s, that's when Gino was kind of a uh, breaking yeah, up, petering a, out. A like, couple, a couple weeks ago, thirty years ago, it was January. Here I can show you. I don't know if the but can you see a poster in that corner? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can tell there's a poster, but I can't okay. see what it is. It's the first Dandy Warhol's concert, and it it says it's so classic Portland. It says bent, <laughs> and then it says jump, and then it says Los Dandy Warhols, and it's got the red circle with the white letters in the middle, and it's hand screen printed. And whenever the Mexican uh, culture of Portland had they would have dances big dances like um, at, like where they have the rodeo and shit and uh, or the convention centers so like and they would they would put these posts thousands of them up around in old Portland you know in old back in the old days and that was the style of poster so some clever dude in chum or bent uh, very Portland '90s names, you know, four letters. That's it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, one of them thought that would be clever, and they made those posters. And I snagged one, and that was our first show. And so I snagged one, and uh, just you know, I only kept a lot of memorabilia. Um, Pete's kind of probably more of a historian about us than than anyone else in the band. Okay. But man, I got I'm the only one with the first poster. Look at that. And it's right in your your basement that was somewhere else, but you brought into this home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was my my uh, my pad, dude. My wondering what's my what my life's gonna what am I gonna do with my life? What am I gonna do? Is anything gonna work out for me? All of those thoughts were in exactly this setting in a different room down the street that I can see from my house now and look how it's it's worked out i mean it worked uh, out all right it worked out all right uh all these years later the dandy warhols uh new record coming out so uh, touring the world uh it's it's phenomenal so again the uh, rock maker comes out march 15th uh, you're doing a bunch of dates in, in the u.s and in canada uh in march but again in april you're going to uh, our friends down under australia in New Zealand, and you can find everything at dandywarhols.com, right? I believe so. Yeah, I mean, unless, unless, unless you have like a favorite, do you have like a favorite Instagram or uh, X? Do you, you have a favorite source? I've of... never been on any social media in my life, not You're even better off. You're better off once. Yeah, I, I like life, you know, I'm kind of <laughs> a like Luddite. Life. I like my life to be what's you know, like out there, it smells good, smells good. Walk around to Oregon, a lot of trees. You know what I mean? It's just nice. It's, people are nicer in person than they right. are on the internet. You're 100% so, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hope- and, and you know what else is great um, mm-hmm. is that I get to go to pizza at my favorite pizza place tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, is yeah. It- oh, shit, I'm getting blown up. Okay, I think I got another another interview. All right. So, I'll, yeah, I'm going to wrap up uh, now anyway. So, Courtney- Oh, wait, let me see who it is. I got it. Yes, it's Eric. It's Eric Carlson. Uh, oh, no. I don't want to piss off Eric. Fuck. He can only be calling because I need to do another one. Yeah. So do let's, you... uh, 
let's because we you were running late, so I was playing catch up. So let's uh let's let's just hope we can do this again, Courtney. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I, really, <laughs> I really do appreciate your time and just congratulations. <laughs> And, and I appreciate yours soon. a lot. Thanks so much for being interested in doing this, you know. Absolutely. Right on. So that does it for this episode of Appetite for Distortion. When will you see the next one? Well, the words of Axel Rose concerning Chinese democracy. I don't know if soon is the word, but you'll see it.